good afternoon everyone uh, i'm very happy to, to be here uh, on this occasion uh, firstly i'm quite impressed with uh, this initiative of a science colloquium in a university and uh, i'm also impressed that uh, professor karmalkar uh, personally for uh, such an occasion so i should thank him for uh, not on uh, for the support for such an activity and for uh, taking interest and being present uh, in person so actually this uh, awareness is something that is uh, that has been nurtured in our culture uh, from very ancient times uh, and unfortunately we so, sort of uh, seem to emphasize uh, uh, specific things about culture which are so old fashioned without actually imbibing the crux of uh, what uh, the uh, what the culture has brought br uh, brought us namely the uh, scholarship was something of uh, great importance in india at one time and it's uh, high time that uh, we sort of uh, follow that and uh, uh, try to be scholars apart from pursuing one's own field whether uh, uh, in whether in academics or otherwise i mean irrespective of that i think it's always of interest to uh, get, get an overall view of the of the society so uh, it's in it was in this context i was very happy when i got the invitation from uh, professor kumbhar i mean the official invitation from is of course from the, the vc uh, to uh, pr make this presentation so uh, aware of the fact that i'll be addressing a uh, much wider gathering than uh, than I, my usual uh, audience uh, i had to choose something which in which i can hope to convey a little more of course mathematics is uh, is to have uh, is uh, is something of a vast subject and i need not uh, tell you the, this and nevertheless i wanted to pick something which uh, has engaged uh, mankind through uh, ages and uh, uh, continues to be of something of importance and uh, so in that respect i came up with the idea of talking about uh, equations inequalities and their solutions now uh, as you would imagine equations is something very uh, very critical very basic to mathematics uh, i mean if uh, i think if you if you are in a general conversation and want to characterize what mathematics is it's always uh, i mean uh, numbers uh, and their interrelations which are mostly in the form of uh, equations and inequalities and other than that we of course have uh, uh, the shapes geometry but of course but uh, geometry is also deeply interrelated to equations thanks to uh, some of the developments that you know and maybe we will have uh, occasion to see through this uh, in this lecture yeah so uh, uh, i refer to very ancient times so uh, it may be yeah so uh, one of the earliest equations which has uh, captured the imagination of uh, people across cultures is the equation x square plus y square equals z square now everybody in the audience would have uh, come across this equation it's uh, uh, well i'll probably not spend time asking people uh, when they learnt it it is it comes from the pythagorean theorem you know that uh, if you have a right angle triangle then the square on the hypotenuse is the sum of squares of the on the other two sides and uh, also the other way that is if you have a triangle who such with the property that the uh, square on the hypotenuse equals the sum of the other two then it is a right angle triangle and uh, what is not often realized is that this converse property has been very crucial for ancient uh, civilizations and it was pro it's uh, actually believed uh, that uh, the in the construction of the pyramids when which are the, some of the uh, uh, oldest and magnificent structures they needed to draw need, needed to get uh, right angles right i mean the two uh, the the base is a square so you need to uh, to to be able to draw right angles and in that it is believed that they used this property of triangles that if you have uh, uh, the pythagorean uh, pro property which are recalled then you would get a right angle triangle now as about the egyptian civilization this is uh, somewhat of a surmise which uh, people haven't actually been able to confirm from uh, the available evidence but on the other hand in the case of uh, india 
there is a very definite uh, evidence I mean that uh, the, uh, the, uh, this property was used. Now uh, the uh, our knowledge of history uh, in India goes back at least to the Vedic period and the, in the Vedic period we had the uh, I mean the emphasis that there was you, you would all have heard of the Yajnas uh, which played and played a very important role and because of the importance that it had uh, there is a lot of intellectual activity that happened around that and in that included uh, geometry and the uh, uh, Vedis that the fire altars that they, had, they, they were constructing for the Yajnas unlike uh, what you see in the weddings and such functions today they were not just small squares they were actually some huge uh, figures and very intricate shapes like the falcon or the uh, turtle and so on these uh, animal shapes or even the, the trays with uh, a variety of kinds etc and the sizes uh, would uh, the size of the fire altar itself would be from 15 feet acro uh, across 20 feet etc so some something of that size uh, would be involved now uh, if you want if uh, now uh, i am emphasizing this because if you uh, say if you take a a4 paper usual paper and you want to draw a right angle it's with a bit of practice you can just do it by by hand without the aid of any uh, devices on the other hand if you want to if you need right angle triangles of that size you need something something of an equipment so you need to understand some geometry basic geometry be, be, uh, so that you can do it efficiently and in that respect uh, what I mentioned about this uh, Pythagorean property that uh, a triangle with uh, who, whose hypotenuse squared is the sum of the other two squares is a right angle triangle was used for constructing right, right angles in, the, in this context. And uh, here we have listed some uh, uh, triples 3, 4, 5, now this has a property 5 square is 3 square plus 4 square. Uh, similarly 13 square is 5 square plus 12 square etc and these uh, triples are actually mentioned in uh, what is the, the Baudhayana Shulva Sutra which is uh, believed to be from 8th century BC. So uh, as far as uh, back as that one had uh, the aware awareness of this property and it was uh, used for uh, constructing right angles. Now. Uh, Okay, uh, I, I don't think I'll go. It, it's uh, it would be sort of interesting to uh, uh, describe how this property is used. So may, maybe I'll spend a minute uh, trying to do that. So they would they would have uh, let's say a long uh, rope of a certain size. Then you take uh, mark the midpoint M. Then <coughs> Uh, you, uh, you again mark a midpoint which is which is an easy, easy each of these is an easy process and again mark a midpoint of this here and notice that you now have a rope where this is and this are in the proportion of 5 and 3 right. Now you take a pole to mark two points at a distance 4 and stretch this rope in, in, in this way. Uh, you hold at, the, at this mark here that we have and uh, the two ends are tied to this uh, yeah, this is uh, arranged so that this is four units and you take this rope and hold uh, hold at this mark and stretch it in this way you have this 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 is in the proportion 5 and 3 so therefore you get a right angle here this is how they constructed the right angle uh, using this particular triple now there are also certain uh, constructions in which they use some of uh, used uh, 5 12 13 and in the apastamba shulva sutra which is another shulva sutra of a similar uh, analogous period the uh, there is the, there is a kind of illustration of how the other two other three triples can also be used so this is just a sort of uh, historic introduction to uh, to this idea of uh, using the uh, equations x, x square plus y square plus uh, a, a equals z square. So now uh, we will later come to the uh, idea of how this sort of goes just spreads into in different directions uh, but for the moment I am going to some uh, to another equation which in a sense is, is simpler than this though uh, its appearance and uh, the, the attempts to solve it uh, are uh, somewhat later in some sense. 
Oh, uh, okay. No, I wanted to say something about. Sorry, before I go to the next equation, uh, the, this equation itself, uh, I, I should uh, uh, let you know what what uh, how it developed in other other cultures. So the the equation was cons uh, considered by uh, Greek mathematicians. Among them, uh, Pythagoras is of course. Uh, well known the figure. Uh, Plato is usually thought of only as a philosopher, but actually he had contributions to mathematics in a certain form and uh, in particular this e uh, equations of uh, this system is something that fe is featured in that. Now <coughs> in uh, one of the basic works in uh, geometry as you know is Euclid's elements from the uh, Greek tradition and uh, the book 10 describes the, uh, the though, though the primary emphasis there is on geometry actually Euclid's elements contains a lot of uh, uh, mathematics of uh, arithmetic variety and uh, uh, Euclid describes all solution all such triples. So you are interested in triples of integers where the sum of the uh, two of them square sum of squares of two of them equals the square of the third. and uh, uh, Euclid describes that all these will be in the of the form n square minus m square as is one uh, <coughs> entry, 2 mn is the is another entry and n square plus m square is the third entry. So the point uh, is that in case uh, you have not seen this already, when, when you square the term n square plus n m square, the square of that will be the square of the other two which is it's a it's an easy easy thing thing to check and uh, the statement an assertion here is that all all the tri triples with the property can in fact be written in this form as we take m and n uh, any two natural numbers then uh, this with this will always have the required pythagorean property and, and uh, whenever the uh, pythagorean property is satisfied the you will ha still have you the, that will hold so for instance 3 4 5 you take you start with the square m uh, uh, n equal to 4 I mean n square equal to 4 that is 2 square and take uh, the other one to be 1. So it is 4 minus 1 and 4 plus 1 and the, four, uh, the other third term will be 4. So similarly all these can uh, arise from that uh, general expression. So for this equation we not only know uh, the uh, we have seen geometric uh, uses but also uh, that uh, there is a, there's a complete way of understanding of what all solutions are. Now this is uh, something of a goal in, in all respects uh, might sometimes but uh, very often one can one reaches only uh, part of the way. So that is just a philosophic point uh, that I want to make about uh, e solutions of equations. Now uh, let us get down to something that actually looks much more simple. So ax plus by equal to c. So <coughs> uh, you have uh, here a and a b and c are uh, given. So you have two quant quantities, two numbers and you want multiples of them to add up to a given number. So you have a and b are given and you want to find numbers in, uh, x and y such that the sum ax plus b uh, uh, by equals c. Now uh, to find solutions as real numbers or rational numbers is not difficult. You simply, uh, I mean anybody in high school would uh, just take, uh, you, you take uh, uh, take the term b, uh, ax to the other side, so it will have you really want to solve by equal to c minus ax. So uh, if of course if b were 0 then there is no, no, nothing to, uh, then it is uh, it is easy to see what to do and if b is not 0 then you will get y equal to c minus ax divided by b, that will be, that will be your solution. Now the uh, issue is that uh, even if a, 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 b and c uh, are integers, uh, a, b and c are integers, what you uh, arrive at will not be in, in, will not in general be an integer, it will only be a rational number, right. But uh, in various contexts it is important to know integer solutions, 
which is uh, <coughs> uh, uh, integer solutions x y. Now, uh, let me give an example. So, the, I mean in fact, this equation arose in the com primarily uh, in the context of mathematical astronomy. Now, uh, you have different planets moving at different uh, uh, speed, different, with different periodicity and uh, I mean the, you know that uh, the, the, the important things like Ashtagrahi where when uh, there is a conjunction of all uh, uh, all planets, all planets will be seen uh, all in the eight plan, um, planets being uh, uh, aligned or so uh, forget about eight if you, even if you have want to know when two planets will be, will be aligned you will have an equation. So, there is a periodicity of each of those. So, certain multiple of period uh, of that added to the initial position should actually bring you to the to equal position. So, the if you uh, think about it, so you will see that the uh, condition for alignment will give you an equa to equation uh, of this form. It will <coughs> uh, so, A x plus B y equal to C and you want to find integers, what is the number of times of one of them, number of times with the of the other uh, 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 of the other will, bring, uh, together, will bring, uh, together make a dis, uh, difference of uh, uh, bring them together then that is equal, equal to C. Okay, so uh, and uh, as I said it is in uh, it comes from mathematical astronomy and uh, there is a lot <coughs> Uh, I am going to say more about how uh, uh, the uh, its history in India and uh, so before that uh, let us recall I mean this probably uh, the, this uh, should be able to recall from uh, your school mathematics there is something called the Euclidean algorithm and the Euclidean algorithm you would have learnt for finding the greatest common divisor of uh, two numbers. If you have two numbers let us say uh, 10 and 15 and you want to find the uh, GCD, the, the greatest common divi divisor of that, what would you do? You, uh, you take the bigger one, you subtract the sm uh, smaller one from, from that and you get, uh, get uh, the, the, uh, the what remains now is that the smaller number and the difference of the, uh, of the earlier two. So, okay. so, now you repeat. The whatever is the bigger you from that you subtract the smaller one and then you get a new pair of uh, numbers where the uh, ori the maximum size has now has now decreased and that you know that ultimately this leads you to the uh, greatest common divisor of the uh, uh, of the two so <coughs> Uh, I, I, I suppose this, is, this should be very clear, so I will not spend time on uh, el elaborating on that. So, uh, and the Euclidean algorithm uh, is uh, used for finding finding the not only the, now you can get the greatest common divisor, but uh, it also gives you a way of solving the equation, uh, uh, so solving this equation. The uh, Roughly the point is the is the following. <coughs> so if you have a pair A B, you get a new pair A1 B1 where uh, you retain whichever is the smaller one and the other one you replaced by replaced by the difference of the two. So, I am deliberately putting it in a, in a way that can that can be continued. So, now from you up do the same thing again. So, I will get A 2 B 2 <coughs> and so on and you know that uh, this will end in one of them being 0 and the other being this being the this is not 9 it is actually G C D of of A and G C D of A and B that 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 is how the al algorithm Euclid's algorithm proceeds and uh, at this point. So, if you had the equation A x plus B y equal to C now uh, this if I if I rearrange my variables it corresponds to this very this equation and ultimately this will actually come to G x uh, equ equal to some, uh, some uh, so, uh, let us change in other words now I am now changing the variable v, b1 y y, y uh, okay. it, 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 this gets converted to c is c is the same and uh, finally, this will come g x equal uh, plus 0 equals 
of C. Now first of all this, this is uh, unless C is a multiple of G this cannot have an integer solution and when they is G, C is a multiple of uh, G then you can simply solve this equal to G mod C. And the way to solve this equation is to go back from here. See each time uh, you, you performed a certain operation you perform now apply the reverse operations and that will that will give you an equation a, a solution of this equation that is the very standard way of uh, doing things. Um, uh, we will not go into the details, but uh, the basic idea is that from this equation you can con you convert it to, uh, uh, to a set of equation by a certain operation namely you subtracted the smaller one from the bi uh, bigger one. So that, that's a certain linear operation performed here, and uh, you uh, you can get back from solution of this to a solution of this by performing the reverse operation. That is that is uh, uh, the, this this idea will be is common across sciences. You do certain there are certain operations, and you can uh, the, uh, in many contexts you know that you can perform reverse operations, and that's what uh, we are, we are we are doing. And uh, the point is at this stage when, when you actually reach this stage uh, the solution is obvious. Now, now you know uh, uh, what you can do and therefore you can, you can get back. And uh, Euclid in fact gives you, uh, <coughs> tells you that uh, whenever there are, uh, if, if, G, if this G happens to be 1 then you can actually if, uh, if, if A, B, are co prime this means that that is g equal to 1 then there exist exist mn such that am plus bn equal to 1. So whatever other c you want to get you can get by multiplying this equation by c. So <coughs> that's the uh, way uh, of solving the uh, solving such an equation, and uh, this method was also no apply used. I mean known and uh, used in mathematical astronomy in India going back all the way to uh, Aryabhata. Uh, I have not mentioned it here. Aryabhata is from the fifth centu uh, century, and uh, Aryabhatiya is his uh, celebrated work, which is. Uh, uh, it is actually interesting to note that it has uh, just just about 121 shlokas and that encapsulates the knowledge of uh, Kusumapura as he says uh, in his book uh, 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 of that time including a variety of things that we will uh, will we'll, we'll be talking about here. Oh, this one? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, <coughs> so, and, and that method was ca is called the Kuttata method in Aryabhatiya uh, for finding integral solutions to, uh, uh, to equations of this form, which basically performs these operations. But uh, the, there are works in uh, of Aryabhata, Aryabhata and also many subsequent. Uh, uh, mathematicians in India, India giving, in, uh, giving clearer and clearer expositions of uh, what is, uh, what, how it is to be performed. Now uh, let us come to the next equation which is, which also played a imp very important role in, uh, in India particularly. Uh, <coughs> this equation is, has x, x square and y square as variables and uh, d is something of a d and k are some numbers k will actually we will be taking typically equal to 1. And so d times x square plus 1 let us say we want to be y square. Now this kind of thing is uh, again has a long history why, why do we want to do that because in general so, uh, you cannot you may not be able to have d, dx square equal to y square because if d is irrational you know that uh, for instance you cannot have y square equal to 2x square. <coughs> y square equal to 2x square may not, may not be possible but so if you allow a small change to be made 
So, if you if you put 1 here then you might be able to solve and in, in fact it is possible to solve that uh, for d equal to 2 this was known already to the Greeks and in fact they used it as an approximation to uh, square root of 2. But uh, for more general values of d, it was actually uh, in India that was that it was uh, pursued extensively. Here, there is no loss of generality in assuming that d is not, uh, does not is not divisible by a square. Which that's what is called a square-free natural number. Uh, so the, the <coughs> equation so the, the now is uh, d x square the more uh, and here also let us take think of a more general integer rather than just one. So, d x square plus k equals y square and this is this is generally known as the uh, Pell equation or Pell's equation whatever. Uh, the equation was actually in, in Europe it was actually introduced by Fermat in 1957 I mean 1657 uh, for with k equal to 1. However, actually the major exposition of that do, during those days I mean they, they uh, should remember they did, they did not have journals and they were uh, publishing papers etc. Much of the knowledge of that time is sort of uh, uh, comes down to us from the correspondence that various people had. So, whenever somebody had a new idea he would write to uh, uh, the, the other people in that area by, by letters. So, Parma had a, was a last large correspondent and uh, he, uh, he posed it as a challenge to some uh, to English mathematicians. He was a Frenchman and there was a big rivalry between the French and the English and the uh, Fermat had proposed posed this as a, as a challenge for particular values of D uh, and uh, yeah. So, and the first exposition which sort of uh, goes to uh, was uh, given by Euler. Uh, who mistakenly thought that it was Pell's equation and the name has uh, stuck we still uh, it is still called Pell's equation sometimes now of course people call it Brahmagupta Pell equation with some variation like that. But uh, I mean in uh, this uh, much of the uh, western literature it is called Pell, Pell's equation. Now it turns out in India it was considered by uh, Brahmagupta already in the 7th century <coughs> uh, way, way before before this. Uh, <coughs> and uh, in 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 India, this was uh, for, this was considered for, as a challenge problem. I mean, there are may, many. <coughs> it was sort of uh, <coughs> it, it would be a dream of a mathematician of uh, of, the ta of uh, India of that time to be able to solve. Uh, uh, to get a uh, get a general solution of, uh, of an equation uh, of this form, and. <coughs> So, Brahmagupta himself had uh, made some progress in that and one of the crucial progress he made was to realize that this identity. So, whenever you have x1, y1, x2, y2 and uh, d that is given to you the product of x1 uh, squared minus d y1 squared with x2 squared minus d y2 squared is equal to uh, this expression here notice uh, with I uh, will not read the exact details notice that here uh, we are looking at uh, this term y, y square minus uh, analog, uh, the expression corresponding to y square minus dx square. If I take for one pair of variables here another uh, x1 square minus dy1 square x2 squared minus dy2 squared then you have a new pair namely this minus uh, the square of this minus d times the square of this which is just the product of these two. So, so if these each of both of these were 1 then you will have uh, uh, yet another solution with the value being equal to 1 right. So, uh, for k equal to 1 for instance now this tells you that if there is one solution there uh, that is uh, not trivial I mean for you could have uh, uh, think of one of the variables as being 0, the, but that, let us not think of that as a solution that is a triviality. But if you take non-trivial solutions, uh, we, uh, I mean if you have any non-trivial solution then composing in this way you will get a new solution. So, if there is one solution then there are in fact infinitely many solutions. This was sort of uh, Brahmagupta's major contribution on, uh, on this issue. He also made uh, uh, took specific values of uh, d like d equal to 92, 81 I think and uh, so for which he actually produced exact solutions. Now, uh, a method for this 
a method of solution for uh, solving that was uh, given by a little uh, mathematician Jayadeva who is now about whom we do not know much, but suppose he is supposed to be from 11th century and it is called the Chakravala method. Now, uh, about Indian mathematics, it is one of the things that you should uh, remember, note or uh, remember that Kuttaka and Chakravala are uh, some of the buzzwords, key, key phrases for, for uh, in, in ancient Indian mathematics. So, the Chakravala method goes back to, uh, is from Jayadeva and there is a comprehensive uh, exposition of that in Bhaskaracharya's Bija Ganita and this was composed in 1150. So, <coughs> okay. Let us go forward, I am losing uh, time I think. So, uh, uh, in particular Bhaskaracharya's Bija Ganita contains uh, the uh, solution for d equal to 61, where the x and y turn out to be uh, uh, the, the, these uh, large numbers. So, it is interesting that even when you have the solution, the coefficients are small, d is 61, the solutions are going to be very large and uh, you, can, you are not going to be able to just do, do it by just some guesswork. It has to be, it has to involve a very systematic work which is, uh, which is the Chakravala method in this, in this instance. Now, uh, Fermat had also posed the uh, question for 103 and in fact 103 the numbers are even, even larger, we will not uh, go, go with that. Okay, so uh, coming back to the uh, square equation, apart from uh, the solutions itself, it had, it had has made a huge contribution to mathematics in the form of uh, uh, asking for a more general equation of this form. So, instead of 2, n equal to 2, let us put n x square uh, x raised to n plus y raised to n equal to z raised to n. Can we solve this? Now, of course, you can solve this by putting one of them is to be 0 and then uh, <coughs> uh, adjusting the, uh, uh, the other two. But, so, let us, but let us ignore that and call, look for in uh, non-trivial solutions. Now, is there a non-trivial solution? And uh, it, the uh, it turns out the, uh, in <coughs> okay so the now Fermat, who is uh, the considered the father of uh, modern number theory may uh, he, he was studying he, he uh, working on number theory by u using this diophantus uh, uh, book on arithmetica which uh, I mentioned, I, I do not know, I for, forgot to mention perhaps that uh, Diophantus also in particular worked on the equation x square plus, uh, described the solutions of x square plus y square equals z square. And uh, in the, the copy, in his copy of Arithmetica where x square plus y square equals z square is discussed, Perma made a note in the margin that uh, uh, Though for n equal to 2 there are many solutions, there is no solution when n is at least 3 and that he had a remarkable proof which, which this margin is too narrow to hold. That is uh, that is how it is, his words are translated, the original is in Latin and uh, <coughs> uh, but mathematicians struggled for quite long to uh, try to discover what is what his remarkable uh, proof was. Now, it is very doubtful if he had any, uh, any proof or uh, I mean uh, he might have thought of something as a proof during his uh, I mean this and remark might have been made during his uh, young years and uh, I mean this was still in some correspondence. So, maybe he did not pursue that. So, uh, and, le, uh, <coughs> and the math, it took math, mathematicians to uh, uh, say so this is as many as uh, 350 years. So, so uh, I mentioned the earlier one, the, it was formulated in six, uh, 1657 and uh, <coughs> yeah, uh, around, around then maybe 1657 was mentioned in another context. So, uh, it took more than 350 years when it was finally solved by uh, Andrew Wiles in 1995. But before that, there is of course, uh, I mean, it, this is, is one of the one of the dream problems. As, I mean, in mathematics, in many any science, I think there is always a certain thing that is guiding, uh, the, or, or sort of uh, uh, in the in the <coughs> uh, uh, something that uh, one aspires to do. And uh, in, in mathematics, I mean, in, in all the way until my student days, for instance, it was all, all the, the Fermat's uh, last theorem. This the, the statement. The statement. That, that this has no non-trivial solution is called Fermat's last was called Fermat's last theorem, and it was solved uh, in, in 1995. 
So before that, of course, there were, there were many partial results. Verma himself had given proofs for n equal to 3 and n equal to 4. Now, uh, one might wonder why uh, if, if he <coughs> said he had a proof for everything, why he gave a proof for uh, only n equal to 3 or 4, but there is presumably a time gap and sometime he in uh, his correspondence he explained proofs for n equal to 3 and 4, but uh, the, um, what he had in mind about uh, other values is not known. <coughs> And uh, I mean there is a variety of progress, but I just want to name, uh, mention one name and uh, Sophie German, uh, especially because she is a woman mathematician uh, and of whom uh, few of us and uh, we should always celebrate uh, whatever the contributions that the few women have made and, uh, in, uh, and uh, on such a celebrated problem again uh, <coughs> that uh, Sophie German proved that uh, if you take a prime number between 3 and 97, basically uh, it's, it's, imp it's enough, it suffices to look at n a prime number other than 2. And so then the, the, for n, the, if the prime number is between a, uh, 3 and 97, then the Sophie German proved that there is no non-trivial solution. And uh, not only that, her method was quite strong enough and by making some extensions of that, Dixon later proved, uh, so, uh, say, proved the same claim up to, for primes up to 1700. Okay. <coughs> now uh, another, uh, let me go over to another problem of a similar kind. Uh, <coughs> so here we have the equation x square plus one, x1 square plus x2 squared plus x3 squared plus x4 squared equals n. So we are given some number n and you want to know x, uh, whether it can be written as a sum of 4 squares. Now this is something for small values you can try and convince yourself that this is actually true and uh, in fact Lagrange uh, proved way back uh, that uh, this is this can this is uh, true for every integer no no matter how large n a number you take uh, for n here you can will always find uh, integers x1, x2, x, you can always find x1, x2, x3, x4 uh, we, the, we, integers so that it is the sum is equal to n. And uh, th uh, there are variations of, uh, on this theme uh, that are uh, replete in mathematics of that kind uh, of uh, that time and uh, Ramanujan described 54 such expressions which uh, by such expressions we mean you can introduce various coefficients here and uh, um, Ramanujan described uh, 54 different expressions of this form with some coefficients involved for such that again uh, you can solve these equations uh, so, solve you can, so the, the values of that expression on uh, different if you, when you take different in, integers here uh, cover all natural numbers. So that is to say that if I have some coefficients, certain coefficients given by Ramanujan and uh, then I can solve so that equation for any n here. Now based on that, uh, there is something called the variance problem and <coughs> so the David Hilbert, Hilbert is uh, a very important figure in mathematics. He is, uh, <coughs> he showed that for any whatever any natural number, so not just 2, but if you instead of uh, 2 here, if you had any particular natural number, then you know it is not 4 is not enough, but you will always have you, for, for any number k, there is some uh, number g, g of k such that every natural number is a sum of at most g k kth powers. So here you see that uh, uh, every natural number is a sum of 4 squares. Similarly, it turns out that uh, every <coughs> this g3 equals 9 means that every natural number is a sum of at most 9 cubes. Okay. So, uh, by uh, this is uh, so g2 equals 4 is, is exactly what I what we said before, g3 equals 9 which means that every natural number is a sum of uh, uh, at most 9 cubes. And the issue was to de determine what you, uh, the value of k for uh, more general values, 2, 3, uh, I mean beyond that. And uh, again, there are many Indian names involved in this. So, uh, for k equal, k bigger than or equal to 7, there is there's a lot of work by uh, uh, S.S. Pillay 
was uh, one of the mathematicians in the 50s, uh, um, I mean who passed away in 50 uh, and, uh, and Dixon. <coughs> uh, and Pillay also computed the values of uh, uh, G6, so sum of six, uh, sixth powers, similarly sum of uh, and seventh, six, so every number, every number is a sum of at most 73 sixth powers. Every number is a sum of at most 143 seventh powers. These are results of uh, Pillai. Similarly, there is the G5 is uh, 37 and G4 turned out to be a tough nut to crack and uh, it was pending for a long, long time. You can see the time frame here, this 1912, uh, 1935, 64 and this was only in 1936. Bala Subramanian, who is one of my colleagues at Tata Institute uh, in those days, uh, show <coughs> proved uh, together with uh, uh, French math, uh, this French uh, duo De Jouye and Dress proved that uh, G4 is 19, which means every uh, natural number is a sum of at most 19 fourth powers. So <coughs> that's a bit of history. So now, uh, so far we have talked of uh, equations. Now let's. Uh, I'm going, uh, there, there's also the term inequality that was used. Now, what this is the question of what is an in, how is an inequality to be solved? But before that, let me uh, actually talk, talk, before talking about uh, inequalities, let me actually point out that uh, it's only in mathematics that you can you often have exact equations. So, in in all practices, there is always an approximation to be made, right? You have, you have to allow for error. So, in other words, what you what what you want to say is that uh, you you don't you are not al not always quite interested in this expression having a particular value. Uh, I mean, this this actually being zero, but if it is arbitrary very very small, then you are content, right? There are many con practical situations where you would like uh, you, uh, where you would like these to be integers, but uh, you, you are happy if uh, instead of asking the making this g zero you you can say that if it is less than 10 raised to uh, minus 100 or something like that very very small so now the uh, in a sense equations understanding equations in a in a broader context also is equivalent to understanding inequalities with uh, where this term is is a small term so absolute value of uh, this difference is very small so that that's an inequality which uh, in practical practice uh, plays the role of an e equation so let us think of uh, solving inequalities of, of this form so the in the initial uh, setup you had the coefficients were integers and we looked for integer sol uh, solutions of this now i'm go going to allow the coefficients to be not necessarily integers or not not even necessarily rational numbers uh, and then but want my solutions to be integer solutions. So, uh, so let us say alpha is root 2 and uh, beta is root 3 and I am looking for whether uh, root, uh, root 2 times x plus root 3 times x whether I can make this let us say c equal to 1, I cannot make it exact but uh, whether I can make the difference to be arbitrarily small. Can I find numbers x and y such that with root 2 and root 3 here, this uh, and 1 here, I can make the value to be very, very small. Now, uh, this problem itself is not very hard. Uh, you can in fact uh, solve it yourself if you uh, try it uh, well enough and the hint is that you can use Euclidean algorithm. Euclidean algorithm which find enables you to find the GCD when you have integers actually finds uh, enables you to find uh, solutions of such equations because when, when you take the, when you take uh, first of all there is no loss of generality in assuming the, the, uh, the signs uh, to be uh, po positive. So, uh, <coughs> uh, the, uh, there is no loss of generality in assume, assuming that the, the, uh, alpha and beta have opposite signs. I mean, you can then adjust the sign of the integer that you want. So, it, uh, and then this corresponds to the kind of equation that uh, we are solving here. And uh, so, here in this case, finally, uh, you are ending up with one of them being zero. But in uh, in the kind of inequalities here, where when you are allowing uh, more general numbers. What, it ha what happens is that 
you will not end up in 0, but the, uh, but, uh, the w one of the v values will become, uh, keep becoming smaller and smaller, it will, it will actually go to 0. So, uh, you can make it very, very small. So, that will be the general idea of uh, solving such an equation using the Euclidean algorithm. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, uh, and uh, similarly, uh, instead of just one, I can have uh, uh, more variables here and this is, I can think of as, I, can, I may want to make this as uh, small. Of course, the way I have written the, you, you, somebody might uh, in fact immediately say, what is the big deal? You could put some of them to be 0 and so you, you reduce the number of variables to 2 and then solve it. That that's a way, uh, that would be a very uh, intelligent thing to do. But uh, I have written it in this form because uh, instead of uh, uh, just one, I can take more such inequalities, and then that trick won't work. So you will you will need uh, some more effort. But on the other hand, it's it's nevertheless uh, simple mathematics by which you can uh, you can solve a system of such inequalities, and uh, get solutions. Uh, of that system of inequalities. But what I want to come to now is that if you instead of just this linear expression, I think of an expression of this form where I, I have, sorry there is a typo here, this should be x i times x j. Okay. Uh, I am sorry, this, so summation of a i j times x i x j, you have a certain number of variables uh, x 1, x 2, x n and you are you are taking product of x i and x j putting various coefficients and you want to know whether it, uh, it, it, it comes close to a particular value, a particular given value. Well, now here a i j uh, is a certain, I mean it is, uh, 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 you can think of it as a matrix and uh, you can also easily think of it as a symmetric matrix because this, this is a i j is the coefficient of x i x j. Now, x i x j and x j x i are same, so I can put them together and make a symmetric matrix and I want to know whether uh, this expression can be uh, made less than epsilon epsilon here will stand for an, for an arbitrarily small number. Now, uh, this problem turned out to be quite non-trivial. So, and uh, the rest of my talk is sort of going to be about a uh, bit of history of uh, expressions of that form and uh, the new techniques that it brought in. So, the history is in some ways goes back to uh, Hermann Minkowski of 1896 and uh, the, the, this the German term which say the geometry of numbers uh, which in, the initiated profoundly new way of finding integer solutions to a large class of inequalities and uh, it gave, gave rise to a topic which called the geometry of number theory which is sort of in fact uh, many universities have courses I do not know about uh, uh, your department here, but uh, then uh, Professor Katre uh, would probably uh, uh, have run such course is quite exposed to uh, the uh, topic and uh, <coughs> uh, the, the, this is an in, uh, topic of independent uh, i mean it's a, it's a theme uh, in mathematics which is which comes uh, from minkowski's work the basic idea here is uh, will not for the moment we will not think of a very small uh, integers so if you think of a quadratic expression and uh, the inequality uh, f uh, quadratic expression by quadratic expression I mean something like this, I mean, I mean uh, this expression here, uh, let us forget about, uh, I mean there is a constant, there is going to be a constant, but uh, uh, think of this expression and that is my q x 1 x 2 x n and I want to make it less than a. So, the, if it is the, so in that inequality it will be c plus epsilon for instance. So, and uh, you know that uh, I mean uh, the numbers are related to geometry and geometry is related to numbers. I mean this is something we have uh, inherited from uh, Descartes, uh, the, the Cartesian geometry which you would have studied in dimension at least dimensions 2 and 3 uh, we, uh, relates such expressions to, uh, to geometry. So, in this case uh, let us say in the two dimensional picture you will be basically looking at a region like this and whether there is a there is an integer point there is a point within this region which has integer coordinates right that is that is what uh, the question question would correspond to 
and uh, Minkowski's major contribution was that uh, irrespective of how complicated this expression is, if you, you simply have to look at the area of this and if the area is uh, at least 2 power n, then there is an, uh, an in, a point with integer coordinates other than of course this 0 which will necessarily be a part of that and uh, if, if the area exceeds 2 power n, this is Minkowski's theorem, there is a point with uh, integer coordinates, uh, an integer solution x1, x2, xn to the inequality different from 0 can be found whenever this has uh, volume exceeding 2 power n. So, the, that was a, <coughs> a remarkable step and then people followed it in, uh, with the geometrically, I mean the expressions of this form and uh, as I said that has evolved into a subject by itself called the geometry of numbers. Uh, here is an al another illustration of Minkowski's uh, uh, idea. So, instead of uh, that uh, round the elliptical kind of figure you, would ha you had, you could also have boxes of this form and it tells you that if the num uh, volume of this is uh, 2 power n, when n is 3, you, it, uh, so it will that will be 8. If the volume, volume is 8, there are uh, at least 8 then there are integer solution, integer points with integer coordinates here which will serve as solutions to, in, to those inequalities and different from the origin. Okay. So, now uh, in the, the earlier expressions I had uh, I had looked at things where the, the, you, you are getting bounded regions, elliptical regions of, the, of this form. Those are the what are called, uh, I did not emphasize on this term here uh, expression, the uh, qualification here, Q is a positive definite. So, this positive definite uh, is a property of a matrix which you would have, uh, the math, those in mathematics would have studied. But the property, the, the, the condition corresponds to that I am looking at a figure which will act actually elliptical or in particular it is a, it's a bounded figure. You can ask analogous question for when the figure is hyperbolic. So, let, let's look at this expression Ax minus By times Cx minus Dy. So, uh, instead of this if you had a single variable here and put it equal to some constant then you will get these kind of hyperbolae. On in uh, they'll, uh, I mean, I have drawn. They, these are drawn here only in these two uh, segments. But you will have uh, hyperbola uh, with uh, in in uh, all the segments here. Okay. So uh, the corresponding uh, question now will be: you are, you will be looking at regions of this form and whether there is an integer point uh, point with integer coordinates in these regions. Okay. So. Uh, now, the crucial thing is that Minkowski's theorem does not is not applicable any longer. You cannot have uh, such a thing because uh, Minkowski's theorem had, has a condition that the figure had to be uh, convex. So, I am uh, not given the general statement here we looked at uh, for positive definite uh, regions. So, it, uh, these are ellipses, but the Minkowski's theorem is uh, somewhat more general. You can take a more general uh, convex figure which is uh, symmetric and then for that also the, it holds this, the, it holds for these kind of things. But when the figure is not convex, so in which, which is uh, which is a condition which will fail here. So, uh, Minkowski's uh, theory does not apply and uh, this question uh, I think I will skip some of the uh, slides which I have for uh, introducing the idea, uh, but so this question uh, <coughs> was uh, became very important and it is let me go to yeah. So, uh, let me just uh, uh, linger on the, this slide. So, uh, this question big, uh, so here I have a uh, expression in, in just two variables and we can we can think of the original expression coming uh, having a similar form in uh, more number of variables. So, here the region is a is uh, between say uh, so, you, you have a similar hyperbola here and the region is between 
uh, or if you put uh, this condition on the sign, you can think of simply uh, uh, integer solute, integer points inside this uh, wedge, uh, the, uh, this region and uh, in higher number of variables, you will have sim similar hy hyperbolic uh, regions and you would uh, determine by uh, the coordinate to, to, uh, certain axis and uh, the, uh, you think of the uh, uh, dimension anal analog of this with, uh, with hyperbolic regions and uh, you will have the uh, question, more general question whether there is an integer point inside this and that is <coughs> okay. So, uh, th th that is the thing we are going to talk about and uh, for attacking, attacking that uh, more very more fruitful thing has been to understand uh, uh, first of all, to make a coordinate transformation and think of the hyperbole as coming uh, a being of this form. So, then there are now four hyperbole with asymptotes along the x axis and now because I have see I, I made a transformation. Now, in the new picture I should not be looking for integer points, but in points that when I reverse apply the reverse transform will become integers. So, I, 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 I should be looking at uh, points from a certain other structure which is called a lattice. So, such a thing is called a lattice and you, you uh, and the, you, the particular lattice that you are looking for uh, looking at should be the uh, such that when you make the reverse transformation you would get the uh, integer uh, points with integer coordinates. So, uh, remember that when I have a linear transformation if I look at uh, what happens to points with integer coordinates it will it will become a new uh, grid it will become a new grid if i so <coughs> one, one second so uh, if i originally had the, uh, this kind of square grid and I perform a linear transformation then etc. it will become a new grid with uh, depending on the particular transformation where this angle and the sizes will, will get fixed. So, this grid will get transformed uh, you could uh, as a simple example you could think of if you just shear this. So, then you will have uh, That's a one, that's one possibility. You could share it an, in another direction, so you will you, uh, get new lattices. So because I have performed a transformation, I should now look at the image, the po points in this region which are which uh, are belonging to that lattice, and this turns out to be a very fruitful uh, observe, uh, <coughs> point. And uh, okay. <coughs> and the next observation, which I'll go quickly, is that now rather than thinking of the uh, individual <coughs> uh, yeah so let, let me try to get across this idea i'm looking at uh, these hyperbole and, and there is a hyperbolic region and there is a, uh, i want to look for whether there is a lattice and i want to know whether there are non zero points of this lattice now i think of see along these hyperbole there is a flow that can that one can think of so, uh, if, if you think, if you make think of coordinate transformations which stretches uh, along in one direction, let us say stretches along x direction, this is the, the this is the transformation x y taking to e power t times x and e power minus t y. So, this, this will stretching on this in this direction uh, for t greater than 1 and uh, contracting in this direction. So, the, uh, when I vary my t along real numbers. So, this point will be flowing along the, this uh, this hyperbola and on this side uh, on the uh, along the hyperbola and uh, on, on all sides. So, now and uh, notice that the uh, va value of the expression now that you want uh, is com uh, common along, uh, along these uh, level curves these, these hyperbolae. Therefore, uh, <coughs> rather than thinking of a uh, particular lattice uh, i can even think of the flowing the whole lattice along uh, the flow that i have and the uh, the values will remain and uh, the, the value along any particular hyperbola is same 
So, because now I am thinking, thinking of because of the transformation I am thinking of uh, the product of the two coordinates is, is my expression and that, that remains unchanged. Okay, so, rather than thinking of the flow action uh, flow uh, uh, of the flow on individual points I can think of flow on the whole collection as, as I said. So, they, they, now there is a certain uh, the, uh, issue. Uh, so, we have now introduced a dynamics and uh, without going to uh, too much detail let me uh, just say that uh, the question is now reduced to one about dynamics of the flow. And here it turns out that there is a criterion by go, uh, going back to uh, Mahler could <coughs> which tells you how the analysis of uh, this flow can be uh, can be used to understand. So, now you have a flow happening there are a whole lot of I mean the uh, lattices uh, which have points here and which do not have. So, to, to check whether uh, it uh, the lattice does belong to, to the collection where it has a point inside I just flow it along here and ask if it will come any ever come very near to 0 that is that is the point that is the thing that you want to understand and uh, Mahler's criterion tells you for which lattices there are points very close to 0 that is the that is the, uh, that's the uh, uh, crucial thing. So, the Mahler's criterion will tell you when a lattice has point points close to 0 and uh, you will analyze this uh, original question by flowing the given lattice and asking if it will ever come very close to uh, will have points close to 0. Okay. So, uh, so this previous <coughs> Now, this uh, in this analysis I have showed the picture for 2 and but the same thing uh, applies in higher dimensions which is uh, as far as the analysis up to here corresponds. But crucial interestingly the answer uh, turns out to be quite different in the case of n equal to 2 and n equal uh, n bigger than or equal to 3 and for n bigger than or equal to 3 the uh, uh, this was known as uh, this is known as the Oppenheim conjecture con formula the conjecture which was formulated by Oppenheim around the 1930s that uh, if you take an expression in at least three variables a quadratic expression which is uh, uh, non degenerate is something about the number of variables. So, technical terms will uh, not bother at the moment uh, and indefinite means that the region that it describes is uh, de uh, defined by determined by hyperbole and uh, so, whether these inequalities admit solutions. Uh, this conjecture took a <coughs> uh, now for n equal to 2 uh, the similar uh, <coughs> the, the case stands apart I mean one does not expect uh, such an inequality to have uh, solutions I mean uh, non zero solutions in general and this was known. So, uh, the uh, while the general picture extends the uh, for n equal n at least 3 the uh, outcome is quite different and quite positive in, a, in our uh, sense. So, and the Oppenheim conjecture was uh, settled by uh, Margulis who is one of the uh, who is a Fields medalist, Fields medalist is a Fields medal is a coveted medal in mathematics and uh, in 85 so more than uh, something like 55 years uh, he, he uh, established the conjecture. Uh, of course, there are many partial results in between I mean it was a ma major problem in fact, during my student days uh, it was something that uh, <coughs> we were uh, I was engaged with in uh, pursuing not <coughs> ok. So, yeah. So, Margulis's theorem tells you that if you have a quadratic uh, form that is a technical term for quadratic expressions of that kind non degenerate indefinite etcetera which uh, are properties that I described then uh, when the number of variables is at least 3 these inequalities always admit integer solutions. Now, subsequent to Margulis's work I had an opportunity to work uh, together with him and we made uh, various improvements in that. Uh, we showed that uh, we could choose x1, x2, xn such that the, there is no GCD which, which is which turns out to be useful in various con, uh, contexts. Uh, the solution that it can uh, I mean where, where I mean about where you can locate these solutions also we made some progress etcetera. So, okay. so, I have brought out I hope the point that uh, 
the issue about finding in, uh, integer solutions to inequalities is now transformed to a certain question about dynamics of certain flows. And uh, very important work uh, was done by this lady Marina Ratner on the, uh, the nature of dynamics of uh, these flows, we will not to go into the details of that and uh, but that, uh, that has been that has proved very helpful in uh, understanding those questions further I mean not only just one quadratic form you can have uh, the, the, the various mathematical generalizations and uh, Mat uh, Ratna's work gives a very profound basis for analyzing uh, in terms of dynamics for analyzing these uh, questions. And uh, the uh, as I, I think uh, it is sort of important in any science lecture that you not only uh, tell what uh, is known and uh, uh, but uh, what the future direction or the future directions and what uh, people are trying to do. Now uh, one related conjecture so there the, uh, the, is one related problem let us say is uh, which is something which one can communicate very easily is uh, uh, before rather than reading let us focus on this expression look, look, look at uh, any uh, number, uh, number integer n, n times uh, al let alpha and beta be two numbers which are let us say irrational numbers like root 2 and root 3 or pi whatever favor your favorite irrational number you take n uh, and uh, this uh, this symbol denotes you take n times alpha you subtract the, uh, uh, the integer nearest to it so if if this is is between uh, <coughs> 3 and 4 and closer to 3 than 4 then I'll, this expression will be 3 and so on i mean the uh, so the, the, there is a certain expression in terms of so for every n given this alpha and beta I have this expression and whether this can be made arbitrarily small this, in, this is a mathematical way of writing uh, whether that this product of these three things can be made arbitrarily small whether you, you can find given alpha and beta whether you can find n such that say this is less than 10 raise to minus a million. So, the <coughs> Uh, and now uh, this is an uh, this in its general form is still an unsolved problem one does not know what happens for uh, pairs of various pairs of uh, uh, irrational numbers. But a significant partial result was proved by Elon uh, Ledestraus the person in the picture uh, uh, and he got uh, the 2010 Fields medal uh, and uh, this is a part of the citation of his uh, uh, medal it's that uh, he, he, he made I mean the progress that he made I will not go into the technical details of what uh, the nature of the progress is the problem as it stands uh, in its full generalities remains unsolved that is uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, but the uh, partial progress that he made already earned, earned him the, the Fields medal okay. So <coughs> Uh, this is just something to conclude with uh, my uh, further uh, preoccupation in the recent years. So, uh, as I said, the case of n, n we de dealt mostly with n uh, at least three, and uh, <coughs> we had various. Uh, uh, yeah, I stated various things about n at least three. For n equal to two, I was involved in the formulation, but I said that the case is different, and that's something that we are, I have been trying to understand with uh, along with one of my students, and we have made some progress. So, of course, now uh, I mean the, the very reason why it, it had to be excluded is that it is different. So, you cannot make a, the same kind of general statements here. But the approach, the issue is to understand uh, the what additional conditions in 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 what case in particular cases one can still put the uh, things and in what cases it will not. So, uh, uh, how many solutions are there? Uh, I mean there, there are cases there are uh, values for which there will be no solutions, but then you can try to understand which for which values you could still have solutions and how many solutions are there etc. Et and that is some of the work which uh, we have done uh, that is uh, with <coughs> Manoj Choudhury. Uh, yeah, so th that is I mean it the uh, that is something of an ongoing process I just wanted to give a brief introduction to that. So, with that I thank you all for your patience and uh, thank, uh, wish you all the best.